In this video, we're going to take a quick look at some of the options we have for dragging and dropping, and in particular for creating uh, instances of nodes or creating a branch where you use the exact same node in maybe two different states. Uh, I have a character set up here, uh, the male character, with a very basic behavior. Uh, this behavior I call locomotion, and it's a state machine that has a single node. Uh, and that node uh, also itself, underneath that node, is another state machine itself. So we have a state machine inside of a state machine. We have various ways of viewing that. We can look at it as a wired graph, or we can actually double-click on the state simply and look at the individual states inside of it. So uh, I tend to want to work this way when I'm thinking in terms of state logic. So we'll use the graph view uh, to get a state view of our, our nested um, nested states there. So I have an idle and a walk loop. And uh, this is my start state, the idle. And the walk loop actually uh, is just a walk animation. And you'll notice it's a special color. Uh, the walk state, or the walk loop state actually has a modifier on top of it. You can see um, my selection over here for the walk state. I have a branch node, what we call a modifier generator. And underneath that is my character uh, rotate modifier. So that's what's going to rotate my character while he's walking. So let's go ahead and simulate. And we'll do that. As we're walking, we'll bring up our simulation controller here. And we can actually tweak that variable, uh, the turning variable. That's part of that modifier there. And then we can send it back to the idle. Uh, and we can, of course, uh, s scrub and actually see that. What we'd like to do is bring in a run into this situation. There's various ways to do that. We could actually create a state and use the animation selection dialog and use pattern matching to select the run. Or we can come to our list of all assets and actually drag and drop the run animation in as a state. So I'll go ahead and do that. And I'll uh, rename that using the auto rename tool. The auto rename tool just takes a look at the animation that's inside of the state and strips off a suffix if you like. And that creates some nicely named um, states for us. I'll also add the uh, transition to that and I'll give it uh, the event run. And now we should be able to uh, simulate, um, just to illustrate, we'll start at the top. Uh, inside of that, we can raise the events to go from walk to run. But as you see, when I go to run, it goes in a straight line. We'd actually like them to continue the rotation per that rotation variable. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, set up a modifier on this one so we can create that instance. So we're going to create a modifier generator. It's going to be a custom a modifier. It's going to be an empty one and you see everything turns red to indicate we haven't finished fully specifying that uh, the modifier for that branch. And uh, so what I'd like to do then, let's open up that run state and we'll take a look at that modifier, uh, that branch there. Um, this is the custom modifier here. We really want to replace that with an instance of this modifier here and it's really easy to do that. We basically just click down and hold, drag and drop in the hot zone and this will actually replace that and now, as you can see, we have the exact same modifier in both places. So the important thing here is that while we're in this particular state, uh, that rotate modifier is active. And during the transition, it actually stays active and continues. So even though we're changing states and changing animations, the modifier that's modifying that is active over the top of both of those, even though we're moving in between states. So let's go ahead and simulate that from the top. I will start the simulation in this top level state. Uh, we will shift click to uh, raise the walk animation. We'll go in actually to the, um, the turn variable, which you can get at in various ways. But uh, probably the easiest way is just to double click on the, uh, the variable name itself. And we'll dial in a little bit of a turn value. And then we're going to raise the run state and you see that he actually continues his turn. There was a little hitch in his run there actually. We need to put a little more synchronization into these transitions. So I'll do that. Go into my transition effect and turn on synchronization. And we'll go back to the top one more time. And we'll start the walk. And this time we'll uh, access the variable from our simulation controller here, which is a very handy way to get access to both events and um, variables. And then we'll raise the run event. And as you see, he stays nicely synchronized, goes back to the walk, and then, of course, to the idle. And that's our demo. And that is uh, dragging and dropping of instances and of clips to create states. Thank you.